Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, January 22nd, 2018. And uh, calling to order a little late. It's a 10 of 7th night. We had a, an earlier meeting and then some technical issues, but it looks like we've resolved those. So we've now got our budget up on the screen. And when we get to that, I can shut off that row of lights if that helps on the other side. But our first appointment is a budget presentation from the library. A little, a little after our appointed time because we were actually all in the same meeting downstairs. So our apologies on that. So who would, who's going to do the presentation for you guys? Come on up. Thank you all for meeting with me. Um, so in terms of the FY19 budget, um, we are requesting increases in many categories. Uh, so starting with the new library building operating budget, this one is actually showing a decrease this year. Um, we are asking for a decrease of $13,496. It seems like a decrease, it's really not. <laughs> um, we're asking for $18,000 less than, um, than last year because that was for library energy. Um, as you now know, library energy is mixed in with the other town energy um, budget since we've got the new solar system, so we're no longer asking for that funding. It's pretty clear that that's working and being paid for without us, so we're very happy about that. Um, however, we are asking for um, some minor increases that um, would cover um, the town cleaning and maintenance budget. Um, it's a $4,000 increase this year that we're having to figure out how to pay for, and that's due to the contract. That's nothing to do with increase of service of just maintaining our basic library cleaning at five days a week, which it really needs. Um, we're also just asking for an additional $500 for building repair. Um, we've just noticed in this past year we've needed a lot of repairs. The buildings are starting to get a little bit older and we just would like to be able to pay for those as they get a little bit more expensive as time goes on. Um, in terms of library expenses, we're asking for an increase of $1,115.04. So this will cover the rising costs of new library materials, like our books and DVDs and whatnot. Um, and then we're also asking for a small increase that um, is going to be for our CW Mars membership, which is the library consortium we're a part of. Um, so the CW Mars Consortium provides our residents with typical borrowing privileges at over 140 different libraries in the area. Um, and it also gives us access to these collections via interlibrary loan. Um, so the CW Mars membership gives our, you know, our residents access to over 200 million, um, I'm sorry, 2,500,000 2, unique items. It also provides the library with our integrated library system, full management of that system, and training on the use of the system. So that's a huge expense that comes away from, from the staff of an eye. Um, so while the cost of being a member here of CW Mars is really high, the privileges are insurmountable. Without it, we would not be half the library we are. We really enjoy being a member of them. So I think the, you know, it's just an increase of um, $259 for membership this year that we would like covered by the town. Um, and then we're also asking for $856.04, which is a 3.44% increase. Um, that's the average cost of books it has increased by 3.44%. That's where that number comes from. Um, and so this is just to maintain level services, so maintaining our membership in CWMRs and maintaining the same borrowing power that we've had, or sorry, purchasing power for books. Um, and then figure three um, in our justification, it refers to the support staff salary and the library director salaries. You'll notice that we are asking for significant increases in both of those areas. Um, it's a 17.59% increase for library support staff and an 8.09% increase for the library director salary. Um, this is um, in order to bring all of the library staff up to the average of the comparable towns that the selectmen had decided on, except we are not including um, the bottom three uh, libraries in that. So the libraries from Conway, Hardwick, and Broomfield, we are not counting as comparable to us. So it's the, com the average of the nine remaining comparable towns. And so we think it's um, really important that in order to maintain level services, as you guys have requested, that the staff be brought up to whatever the, you know, the average is for other towns. Right now, we're making far less than that, and it's not, um, we're still providing stellar service. So I think in order to maintain the same level of service, we really need to pay our, our staff what they, um, 
what they deserve and what would they would be paid at similar libraries and similar similar positions. And I think that would be remiss. We should probably introduce yourself because we kind of oh, just went right into that, but just in case somebody doesn't know. My name's Catherine Hand. I'm the director of the Sunderland Public Library. You never know. Somebody might not know. You have the name tag, too. I don't know if you can see that. I don't think you're pulling out a tech yeah. post. I don't know if they can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to clarify any of that. Want to start with questions? Who's got some does the, uh, does the expense formula keep us with the rolling um, percentage requirements for the state for yes. matching? Okay. Yes, we are. So no exceptions on the horizon. Great. Thank you. I'll just say that the one exception is that we do a considerable amount of private fundraising to meet our material expenditure requirements. Right. This year, we were we our goal was to raise $9,000 just to meet our minimum. Yeah, and the reason for that is that the CWMR's membership is, you know, just around nine thousand dollars, and that comes out of our our library expense budget. But that cannot be counted towards the state meaning oh, okay. materials expenditure requirement. Okay, circulation. So, okay. in order to to meet that, I, we ask the friends of the library to okay. raise funds. I'm raising for that. Essentially, okay. to cover the cost of the CWMR's <clears throat> membership, but that all goes towards books and materials, okay. um, and so we can meet those requirements. And, you know, we talk a lot about regionalization, and in a way this is sort of like a type of regionalization that's been going on for a while, is to access resources like that from a regional perspective rather than just relying solely on what your own library has access to, so. And we're, you know, in CWMRs there's also a lot of academic libraries, I mean, we're really borrowing from far and wide, and it's amazing that our patrons can go to Worcester and have the exact same privileges as right. they would in Sunderland um, at their library, and also they can return those books that they they borrowed in Worcester to us and we'll send them back to them for free. It makes life a lot easier for folks. It's a trip to Worcester for yes. somebody, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Any questions, Tom? How about you guys? Awful quiet over there tonight. <clears throat> no questions. Questions. Let's forward. Well done, straightforward. Thank you. There's no questions. Well, that's anyone. Did you guys receive copies of the justification as well? We've got a budget, budget in your memo. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks for coming. It's our first official budget meeting of the year. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, so next up on our agenda, we have the approval of minutes from 1 8. Here's our last meeting. Uh, move the minutes of uh, 1 8 as they're presented. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Three to zero. I'm sure. All right. And next up, we come to Board of Selectmen updates. I'll go left to right this time. How's that? It sounds Please. great. I don't have any updates from last week, although I'm meeting tomorrow with Sherry. I missed a meeting last week of the of the um, financial team downstairs. I wasn't able to attend, but Sherry has been really flexible <coughs> in getting uh, Joe Arcanian. Yes, he'll be here tomorrow at 1.30, so if any of the finance committee members are available and would like to attend, he'll be presenting our long-range forecasting yeah. plan. Yeah. And, uh, some new spreadsheets. Nice. Cool. There we go. It's 1 30 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> how, how far out are they looking at forecasting? Five years. Five years? Okay. Because mm -hmm. right. that, that was an interesting uh, one of the mm -hmm. breakout sessions. Yeah, yeah. Without getting into jumping topics. But yeah, because one of the towns had been doing. Northboro had been doing 10 years mm -hmm. and they've actually won it. It was a fantastic presentation, but they decided to cut back to five years because sure. they're like, 
it's, it's really we just can't pre we, we can like it we can predict five years let right. alone ten you can you can predict most of the capital kind of projections but expense side you can't predict the revenues yeah, exactly right. and you have no idea how you're going right. to get hit from that so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, we, we were just in Boston at the, uh, the annual MMA conference. Uh, I did speak with the uh, Mass COT about uh, North North uh, Main Street and about options. And I um, will pass along to Sherry the name of a person uh, that we sh that we should contact from Mass DOT. That will tell us what our next step forward is, would be outside of us. Listen to what the CHA um, engineers told us. Um, seems every seems that there's a lot of people aware of what's going on. So, but there there is a process, and and at the time, and and she didn't want didn't promise anything, but she did say that you know she didn't know exactly the process for moving forward, but there is a process moving forward. We also, I also talked to a uh, manufacturer that had um, different material, and if anyone's uh, familiar with the rotary that's now, um, that they just installed in Triangle Street uh, in Amherst, uh, East mm -hmm. Pleasant Street in Triangle, the guy that made that material, they look like bricks, but they're not bricks. It's a material, it's a material. <laughs> yeah, it's a plastic. Um, and we talked about how they use those for crosswalks, nice. in, in particular about the, the uh, uh, community compact money that we got. Uh, one of the things that was, highlight, was highlighting the, uh, the, the area, so that may be something that, uh, and he's willing to come out and talk with George. Yeah, I um, give George a heads up too, that we'll probably be doing that, so. So, so we should, we, we should uh, For complete you know, streets for those. Well, for, yeah. for like both, yeah, really, cars. because it, there's um, a number of things like bike lane markings and yeah, and, and, and actually there's a there's we all, I also talked with a company down in Holyoke, Flinmark, um, who now sells solar powered uh, street signage. Yes, um, and it there be, may be a way how to uh, bring those um, in our you know. Um, community compact money for for crosswalks and visibility, and he said they were aff affordable prices. Mm -hmm. we'll see what affordable means. Um, yeah. So we have a lot. Of, we've got a lot. I got a lot of data. Uh, went to a breakout session on opiate, uh, also on um, the legalization of marijuana coming into the towns. Uh, we listened to the governor. Um, pretty quiet this year. It was actually, yeah. yeah. There wasn't a lot of. Yeah. That's um, a good point. When we listened to the lieutenant governor the next morning. Not so, as quiet. Not as quiet. No. <laughs> so it, it is. It was. It was kind of interesting. So. Um, so it was. It was uh, a good trip. Nice. Yeah, I think I think the sessions were better than last year. I think they took some feedback and everything, and I had a, a fantastic nerd out session on the budget um, and that, that one, and there was, it was, it was very interesting. They did some stuff. I don't know that we can incorporate all of it because uh, like Northboro has, I think three people able right. to do their budget, but I think some of the things we can look at, um, and I picked up a couple of other things from um, some other vendors that might help us communicate our message about the budget and some of the information a little better. I think, um, I'm gonna pour through all of the stuff and see what we can call out of it that would help us have our message get out there more clearly and also make it a little easier to read in presentations and stuff without overburdening us. So that's gotta figure that out. But um, but the, the, it was it was definitely a good. Uh, nice. I was going in a little more skeptical than uh, than I thought, and I, I, I thought it was good and and. Uh, <clears throat> and like Tom was saying, the uh, the street items and everything, there were there were a lot of good uh, a lot of good options out there for that. So, um, and that would cover North Main and the crosswalk things that we need to do, and things like that. So there's there's a lot more products out there. So.
it was a good uh, good one. Hopefully next year will be even better. So, and um, the only other thing I have is just before this we were going over with the library their presentation for their um, items, and we we're trying to wrap up. We're gonna we have to have at least one more meeting, but a half an hour was not nearly sure. enough for the, the personnel committee, and we we're trying to wrap up our programmatic approach to try to come up with a. A way to do this, and I know one of the things that we are we do know is if we're going to bring people up to where we're kind of shooting like in the mid range of, of the tier, we can't do everything at once. But we also know that if we're going to do that, we are going to have to kind of take a little bit of a hit if the first year or two, and then it steadies out once we're up to where we want to be. So, but we are working on that. So. Any um, exciting updates, Sherry? Um, budgets are trickling <coughs> in still. Uh, we're putting together revenue numbers, and we'll be meeting with Scott and Joe tomorrow, and hopefully I'll have more information for the board on the 29th. Great. It's still early yet. The state hasn't released is, any yeah. numbers. Um, we usually use three-year averages, so um, we'll run with that for now and adjust as we go along. Also, we finished our uh, CPA records archiving project nice. um, today, so we have um, that nice. on the database, as well as hard copy. The vault looks amazing. Nice. It does the attic <laughs> upstairs. It's very organized. So nice. um, when Wendy returns from her big vacation, we'll schedule a little uh, tour. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah, very exciting. Hopefully, we can get some benefit from that from, like, a... You know, in terms of we have to go digging through for information now, oh, going yeah, forward for requests for information. So, so sh just so you know, the uh, COG, uh, Linda Dunlevy and uh, Phoebe and Bob Dean were at the uh, conference as well. And um, as soon as the trade show opened, they went to talk to the accounting uh, program. Oh, that's right, the software. Uh, software people. It's been a nightmare. They've had a beef with them, so and we and we and we talked and we talked to them about that as well. Oh, good. Thank you. And, and, we all appreciate that. And and they 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 went right they went right to them. Um, so I, I I just think it's a so they they understand there's a problem. Um, you know, you can put a software out there, but if no one knows how to use it, what good is it? And poor support. Yeah, well, exactly. That's, yeah. And, and poor support. <laughs> um, on, on the budget, did, did, did you give us a copy of the uh, letter that you sent out with a request, the question here also? Um, what, can you, I, I didn't I, see it. Okay. So can you, can you put it? The budget I think request that, memo? I saw the email. I, I, think, I think that's important that we have that. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so when we can talk, to, when, when we talk to people mm -hmm. and, and, and as soon as you can get a spreadsheet together, it'd be nice to see also. Okay. And, 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 and again, and I know it's tough, it's tough for a library because you're, you're going first, but did, and, and I don't know how we do it correctly, but so we reduced the, the energy expense line was reduced, reduced. by 18,000, but they show an increase of 8%. Is that um, eight percent compared to last year, or eight percent of similar of uh, 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 same cost? Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It's a good question. So, and and and, and that's the same thing we we've asked um, in 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 the schools to present and others. Um, so so if if you had one-time expenses and put in the budget or whatever, then we would know, we, we, we would actually know what we're looking at. Okay. So, and, and I understand it's going to be $18,000 less because of the, the uh, uh, electrical cost, but if we show an 8% increase yeah. with that $18,000, that's a lot more than 8%. Okay. With respect to the budget hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you. 
and, and, and putting that memo in there too is kind of like the official kickoff okay. of the seat. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like documented that okay, mm -hmm. we've asked for budgets and we're we're rolling on it. So yeah, that was one of the things in the breakout. I know they started doing some of their budget stuff with their school back in I want to say September. Exactly. So, so yeah, I, you yeah, know, was, I think that's very good. You know, so if it's an eight percent increase of of same cost last year. That's fine, but if it's eight yeah. percent plus the eighteen thousand, right? Then you get a, a bigger totally question. Conversation. Yep, I would agree. <clears throat> That's a, that was another thing too about with with the the, the budget. I, I thought it was a fascinating document because the. the they were discussing that when you've got something like this, when you get to the point of town meeting, you're not getting to, you're not having questions like that because all of that information is answered in the document. It's all done, yeah. That makes right. You're, sense. you're getting down to other discussions which you should be having there rather than uh, discussions like that. So it's, it's pretty neat. Well, I, my, my, only, my, my only concern is that we worked hard in the budget process to try to, to try to understand what the cost of operation of a building and of a department or whatever is. Right. So now now we're pulling out energy costs. Well, we worked really hard to put energy costs in, in to running and and then because it made the, the manager of that line item, not just a town administrator, but the department head, have to be aware of the expenditure because I'm. It's very easy just to say that that's not my concern. Right. Um, that those costs. So if I don't leave, if I leave lights on, well, I don't have to worry about because I'm not paying that budget. Right. Because you really, as a department head, you need to know all of your costs. Absolutely. And your, yeah, I know, and your all of your income and your expenses, really, no matter what they are. So, so somehow I still like. I, I think it's rudimentary to take eighteen thousand dollars out and not have um, the department head no longer know what it costs. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. But the, and so the department head should be telling us what they need for electrical. Now, right. And that, that may get covered in one way or another, but you still need to know, here's my electrical costs and how are we going to cover that? Absolutely. Yep. Because, if, in, in, and I, I just, I don't know, I just, uh, I know. I just feel you, you have to, you have to have, our department heads have to be responsible. And they're receiving, they're part of the Schedule Z, so they're receiving net metering credits from the solar project as well. So they're, mm. they can, see, they can compare them both, right? yeah. making sure they're covering the actual credits or covering the usage. Right. Yeah. right. And we will have a spreadsheet for you detailing all of that because so, we've been online for about a year now. So yeah. Beth's putting together a spreadsheet Good. for the board. That'll help. See the yeah. Yeah. We actually have to have a chat with Beth again, I think, just to veer off topic slightly about. Um, the safety complex and the project that was going to go there. Because I think it might be time to revisit that now that a certain utility company has put some money into um, all of the work that they needed to get their station up, which would have been the work that we needed. So I think we need to revisit We're that. We're looking at that one for um, tax payments too, because that was specified in yes, the special for permit. Pilot so I asked Beth on. Um, if she would look at that with me as well. Okay, so good. we've reached, we're reaching out to Eversource to get those conversations going as well. Good, because I, I was having a chat with somebody about that very time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said, what's going on with that? I'm like, you know what, I need to find out because it's been kind of quiet lately. Okay. Um, and so next up under our new business, I see some appointments here. We have appointment for <clears throat> says to dear members of the board I'd like to recommend that Hollis Graves be appointed to fill the vacant associate member position of the zoning board of appeals by way of this memo I'm asking the board of selectmen consider this recommendation and I hope that the board of selectmen act favorably on this request and this is from Steve Kroll the chairman of the zoning board of appeals motion uh, second for discussion. 
This is a recommend. This is a recommendation from the ZBA themselves. I'm wondering if an associate member is something that we have. Just, and you know, forgive me for my forgetfulness. Is this something that we've advertised? Yes, it's been posted on the website. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you. End of discussion. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on our congratulations, Hollis. And thank you. And our next num item here is. Actually, that's me. Do we have anything on the. Emergency, emergency management nope. director? Yeah, yeah it was the zoning. Okay. We just have the two. I, look, I thought there was a third one there. Uh, this is. <clears throat> Please consider this letter as my application to be the Emergency Management Coordinator and Director for the Town of Sunderland. I am 30 year resident of the town and I have been a member of the Fire Department since 2016. I have taken several FEMA online classes in Incident Command as well as multiple fire science related classes taken at the Fire Department. I attend drill every Tuesday evening as well as respond to emergencies to assist with accountability and firefighter rehab on scene. I have met with the members of MEMA Region 3 to talk about the scope of the Emergency Management Director position and feel comfortable being able to accomplish the goals and directives established by the Town of Sunderland. Thank you for your consideration. And this is from Laurie Smith of Silver Lane. And we have a letter of support here from our Fire Chief, Chief yeah. in support of that. This letter reflects my support from Ms. Laurie Smith to be considered as the Emergency Management Director for the Town of Sunderland. It's really the endorsement that you need. So. Yeah, I, exactly. Because if it wasn't him being asked to be it, then I would expect his endorsement yeah, exactly. for that. Yeah. Uh, move to a, a, appoint uh, Ms. Smith for the position of Emergency Management Director. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that one. That's an important role as we've come to see over the years. We don't always. We'll be updating our emergency plan soon, too, working with the COG on that. Yeah, it's a, kind of an ongoing thing that we're always working on. So, um, do we have any other topics, public comment, or anything tonight? Public comment? No public comment. We'll so, be back at this on the 29th. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. One week from today. Getting to that time of year where I think we'll be back on a weekly. Uh, Makes sense. Bless you. We've been uh, a little more, a little less meeting, but now it's time to. Get, bless you. Get down to the excitement of budget time. So. So our next meeting will be next Monday, January 29th, 2018, at 6:30 p.m. Um, have a motion to adjourn since there seems to be no other topics for tonight. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Adjourned at 7 17 p.m.